Hello, Twitch and or YouTube. Welcome back to my stream. I've got what is for me an exciting set of things to work on. Also, drink water, y'all. Water good. Dehydration bag, bad. Today I'm planning on working on ESLint plugin expect type. This is an ESLint plugin I did not originally make someone uh, who goes by Ibez Granov shoot Igor Bezkrovny Igor Bezkrovny sorry rope tongue twister uh, but I, I took over maintenance to to be helpful um, so this thing is an ESM plugin that lets you assert on types Specifically, it lets you write little like two slash queries or dollar expect error, dollar expect type, whatever's that um, you you then can have lint failures on if the things don't match up. Like if this is actually uh, a, a string or something, this line that says let value number would be an error. Uh, I haven't done a whole lot with this plugin since uh, taking over maintenance of it beyond just uh, overhauling the dev tooling to use my standard create TypeScript app. But uh, I, I want to do more. It's actually um, somewhat uh, uniquely positioned, I think, in the ecosystem. There's, to my knowledge, not another ESLint plugin that lets you with certain types. So it's kind of nice having these as an ESLint land, although there are other ways to test types, which are actually referenced later on in the readme. Um, and also, fun fact, uh, definitely typed uh, that has a tooling package called ESLint plugin, so definitely typed ESLint plugin, which contains an expect rule that does basically the same thing as this, but with more features. Um, so what I'd like to do is, for two reasons, get ESLint plug and expect type working, known bug-free, give or take, uh, certainly not any major bugs, and up to feature parity with the definitely typed ESLint uh, expect rule. Uh, the two reasons are, one, I just think it's good for the ecosystem. It's a project I'm managing. I want it to do well, like, like all my little babies. Uh, two, uh, I want definitely typed to use ESLint plug and expect type. Uh, I don't like having two things in the ecosystem that do the same thing. Uh, code deduplication is always nice. So I'm going to be working on ESLint plug and expect type stuff today. Uh, so I'm just going to go through the list of issues. I'm also going to post on social media. Where is my stuff? As always, feel free to ask questions, chat about TypeScript and ESLint and open source and whatever, whatever y'all want to talk about. Always happy to chat. Ba -ba -ba, just recapping for the threads. Hyper up call. Hello, it's been a bit. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, flow comments. Yeah, those are. Ooh, lordy. Does the flow site only have light mode? Okay. Oh, where do they go? Hmm. I feel like I know what you're talking about. Anyway. Chrissy, Seabed. Welcome. Thanks for coming in. Ooh, my camera's getting all lopsided. I need a better mount for this stupid thing. Unrelated to any of you. Danny Guardio, LA. Welcome. Hello. Thanks for hopping in. No question, just saying hi. I appreciate you saying something, Mini Scruff. Thanks. Thanks for hopping on. How are y'all doing? Anyone working on some fun stuff? And thanks, Chrissy. Likewise. Let's look at... This issue has been bugging me for the longest time. It was reported in January of 2021. <gasps> Bit out of order. You're contributing to TypeScript BS Lint. Yay. Awesome. That makes me happy. I'm just posting this. So first up for... We'll 
for today will be a long standing. How long is this? Oh, almost three years. Issue that an old snapshot feature of the plugin doesn't work correctly. Eek. Who uh, reported this? To see if there are <laughs> someone I can tag into. Tech lead at Refined Dev. What is Refined Dev? Oh, a React framework. That's cool. I've seen this somewhere. I think they their profile just had the Twitter link. Yes. Danny RPC thing. Yeah. Can you um? Or would you be up for posting the link to that? I think it's a really cool framework. Toby Solutions. Hello. What have you been up to? How's it going? Oh, so many people today. I love it. Ooh. Void is only valid. Yeah, this would be a good one. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Good first issue, accepting cards. It's not a rule, so you got like the nice like setup. Just touch this one rule file and it's tests and maybe docs. Yeah. Yep, yep. Excellent. Swell. So one of the reasons why I look up people on, actually the main reason I look up people when I uh, look at issues is because I want to, when I'm doing this, is I want to shout them out. Cool. Yeah, RPC Anywhere. I was just taking a look at this. Uh, it's pretty cool. It's like a general, small, like low-level RPC. Create Anywhere. Abstraction. Cool. I'm always down to stream. Yeah, actually, next week, um, next week might be tricky because I'm going to be at my in-laws for Christmas. So excited. But yeah, no. Just for fun, let's do it. Hit me up. Uh, okay. So, um, okay, I'm actually going to dive into coding now. Uh Running ESL without fix still updates snapshots. Um, so this plugin, ESL plugin expect types, uh, expect type has a snapshot feature. Expect type snapshot, um, where is the docs for this? Let's go to the expect rule. There we go. Expect type snapshot. Um, so it takes in an ID for that snapshot and then stores that in a JSON file. Um, the problem is uh, it's supposed to only update it when you're in dash dash fix mode. What actually happens is... Uh... Oh, yay, Toby. Looking forward to it. What actually happens is that uh, the... The option is the only way to disable the fixing. Uh, right now, they always update. And I, I remember right, it's that uh, the plugin was coded on an assumption for how ESLint works that used to be true, but no longer is. Check out main, get pull. I don't know what changes I'm messing with. Pull. Yep, it's on PMPM. So I posted in the issue, I suspect. It's this code. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Trick function. Comma is no longer valid. Applied equals true. Yeah, so uh, previously, ESNet would only read rule fix objects if fix was passed. Now it seems to, no matter what. All right. I think I'm pretty sure. So the right thing to do here, or like the best and hopefully right thing to do here would be, if possible, see if there's like some ESLint API or environment variable or something we can read to know whether we're in fix mode. God dang it, is my screen frozen? Oh, it's this stupid OBS bug. One second. Uh, hang on. Thanks for saying something. Ugh, I keep forgetting. I don't know what I have to do to get this thing to work, but like the OBS, specifically the display in just like fr freezes once in a while. Very irksome. Whoop. There we go. Okay, so 
I'm reading code. Yeah, so what right now what happens is in the expect rule, um, when we have an, a snapshot assertion, it's coded on this assumption that getting the text for that fix should only happen uh, if dash dash fix is passed. Now it seems to always. So I'm gonna, do I have a temp directory? Yeah, so I'm gonna verify this experimentally. Get add all, reset powered head. Oh, I'll just undo all my changes. So npm init yes, tsc init, touch index ts, index ts. So let value equals 9001, and then let's look at the value. Uh, so I'm going to set up a, a ts temp, just like a temporary repo that um, uses the oh my god uses expect type uh use like typescript npm link and npm link uslint plugin expect type I'm also gonna make a git ignore my temp Actually, wait, what am I doing? I have a dedicated repros uh, repository that I push things to. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use that instead. Let's take in ESLint RC, git ignore index, package, TSC, whatever. Okay. Be my D ESLint ESLint plugin expect type TypeScript TypeScript ESLint parser. Actually, wait, do I even need the parser? Be on D. Apparently, I don't. All right. Um. Oh wait, I do. <laughs> npm lint npx eslint index ts uh, need parser options dot project getting a repro the most exciting part of fixing a bug all right here we go let value number expected type to be something uh, what oh cool very nice. So it's fixed. Okay, so the regular just two slash assertion syntax works happily. Update type snapshot, MDs, where's the snapshot stuff? Expect type snapshot, so let's add this here. All right, and for the Ooh, excuse me, snapshot file, we get function call expression 9001. It's over 9000, okay. So if I switch to 2002, we do get the lint complaints, but then the file still updates, that's not good. Can't have that, so I'm going to Build watch. I'll just do that in a terminal in the background. So let's put expect zero. Let's just put some console logs to start. Uh, creating the fix function. Thanks, Toby. Appreciate it. I uh, I have a good time. By the way, are there other like open source maintainers who stream? Um, I know I follow some of them, but probably not enough. Of them actually not a big Twitch guy myself. If there are other people you follow, I'd love to know about them. Inside the fix and console log getting text. So the index yes. Will that work? 
No logs. Let's uh let's do a lint. This lint index TS. And we can run lint. Nothing's happening. Are we updated? Cool. Nicholas, hello. Wait, are you the Nicholas I owe things to? Because I promised a, a Nicholas that I'd look at something, and it's on my to-do list. I'm so close to it. But y'all should uh Y'all should stream. We are updated. Yay. Okay. Um Oh, you know what? ESLint. What I, I'm going to disable the ESLint extension, actually, because maybe it's... I think what's happening is the ESLint extension is automatically updating the snapshot, which then means that when I run it on the command line, there's no error or uh, report, which means that these logs aren't happening. So I'm going <laughs> to... Love it. Uh, npm run lint after changing it to 9004. Are we updated? Creating the fix function inside the fix, getting text, getting text. Great, it gets text twice and then it also updates the snapshot isn't that fun <laughs> thanks i'm glad nicholas i appreciate it and so what actually are we getting in uh the fix for args do we get anything uh useful from the context no we literally just get a a fixer, which is a fun an object that has all these functions on it. Uh. Oh, well, that makes it easier for me. I'm trying to slowly reduce the amount of stuff pending. I always have like 50 million things, and I've been cutting, getting good at cutting back, especially the second half of this year. So great. Um, so this is annoying to me because I need a way for the plugin rule to know if we are in fix mode. Ooh, quick question from Siba2. If I cherry pick the commits, blah, 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 and want to skip, blah, and blah. Uh, do I type the skip? Oh, I have no idea. Good luck. I almost never use cherry pick. And when I do, it's never been with a flag. <laughs> Good luck on that tutorial. Uh, <laughs> if anyone knows, that'd be awesome. Okay, I feel like I've probably asked this uh it's somewhere before like what i want to know is is there a right way to do this um so i'm gonna look up issues from me just uh nothing isn't plugin expect type anything around eslin plugin expect type Uh, anything about fix? Nothing that uh, I think that looks reasonable here. Wait, what is this? Different behavior using MPX ES lint. Blah blah blah. No response to closing. Yeah, great. Uh, expect type. Yeah, nothing there. I'm gonna open up Discord, <laughs> but just for safety's sake, I'm gonna... Oh, of course, every freaking time I update Discord, it downloads updates and takes forever. Why don't you just download the goddamn updates while you're open and then don't bother me with it every time I need to open you? So annoying. Ooh, hi, adjective, slash Allison. Hi, <sighs> ESLint. How to know whether in fix mode. Uh, I really don't think we need any results here, but just in case, I'll try looking up. Fix. Oh, Discord stole my focus out of screen. Ha ha. Hey. Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone's talked about this. Uh, oh, yeah, I do have private things. Let me just go over to ESLint. Uh, ESLint open and then uh, ESLint plugin expect type. Because if software worked the way it should, we'd be out of jobs. Ain't that right? Okay, I did ask in the ESLint Discord. Oh my God, did I also? I feel like knowing me, I would have cross. Oh no, I forgot to cross post. 
Uh, so I'm going to copy message link. Uh, I asked about this in the ES Lint Discord. What is Tamper Monkey doing? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, I've been meaning to... Uh, what is Tamper Monkey? Uh, thank. This is from Anthony Fu. Uh, refined GitHub notifications. And Fu refined GitHub notifications. This thing is freaking awesome. It's been just... It auto clears, like, renovate the PandaBot spam, like the auto updates. Bumped package, whatever, that you don't give a crap about from 004 to 005. Love it. Yeah, and I'd like a few little niceties. All right, so let's see what ESL and Discord people mentioned. Only when a fix is applied, not when the rule is reporting. Uh, uh. Uh, yeah, so uh, looks like nothing. Um, <laughs> annoying. Uh, there's no, nothing useful. I don't want to say nothing useful came up. Uh, P dot dot dot. Oh, look at the cat. The answer is useful. Nothing I can use was mentioned. Nothing we can use here was mentioned. Ah, well. All right, so uh, what I could do is I could check node args. Uh, <laughs> what if I did like pro oh not no uh process dot argv console dot log process dot env process env argv let's see what happens when I log those uh <laughs> oh boy so is there a fix. I, what? I, oh wait, and I should, I wanna see, when I run with, okay, so what I'm gonna see is like, process argv and process env, is there, and, learner, it's been a while, welcome back. How you doing? Is there a difference um, when I run with or without dash dash fix? Like, could I check like, okay, there's a process arg dash dash fix in there, therefore I'm gonna update the fix. That's like a, a real a, ugh, heuristic, like, I don't like it, but, gonna do all right so here's what i'm doing uh switching this to plain t all these to plain text i ran on the left without dash dash fix and on the right with so i'm gonna compare active file with in vs code we see the differences so process.argv does in fact have a dash dash fix and okay we're missing the errors so yeah basically eslint doesn't set up any like process env whatever's letting us know what form we're running in I, separate from this, I submitted an RFC for letting parsers know those things and it was declined. I'm still inconvenienced by that to this day. But we can check process.argv. Right. So best I can do is I can check a process.argv. <laughs> this is so stupid. I can check a process.argv uh, has um, um, dash dash fix as an entry. <sighs> and then argv dot includes and then only set up the fix function. So I hate this. This is like a silly heuristic. Um, but there's just no way to <sighs> there's just no way to to do this. Like otherwise, like I have no way of knowing where the ESLint is run in fixed mode. And yeah, it would break the ESLint API. Like the VS Code extension, this is just not gonna work for that. So in fact, I can actually re-enable the ESLint extension because, uh... well, this should be working as expected. All right, so let's change All right, npm run lint. Learner, if you ever want to talk privately, DM me. Uh, you seem like a really nice nice person. Uh, if you ever want to like chat or set up a call, I was happy to. Anyone here who's a coder and going through things, let me know. All right, so 
updated. Yeah, process.argv um, is, I can actually just log that. It's the arguments that you actually started the process with. So like dash dash fix or whatever, no dslint. Uh, so I'm saying if it includes dash dash fix. But like it's a dumb heuristic because what if I do, um, I don't know, this, where I'm missing the dash dash, which is supposed to be there in npm land. Uh, oh, wait, no, it actually, okay, there we go. Anyway, it's a, it's a dumb heuristic. Uh, I don't know how to break out of it right now, but I'm sure there's some way to, <laughs> to break out of this. Um, So what I'm going to do is um, this ESLint um, doesn't provide a way to, um, doesn't tell rules whether they're in fix mode. So fixers that impact other files. So the fixer doesn't have a way and the fixer and fixers are doesn't indicate I want to get this on the line it's fix mode and fixers run immediately we don't have a way to delay file updates natively in ESLint instead we use this awful heuristic, this inaccurate heuristic to where in CLI fix. All right. And we don't care about applied because Return empty string. Twelve hundred p. Oh yeah, is that good or bad? I do it because I don't like having like stuff overlaid on code. Even though like right now we <laughs> probably could just take up the whole right side. Uh, yeah, I don't like having the chat floating over there. So I just do um, like uh, like my monitor and then also stuff on the side. So whatever resolution that ends up being. Why is this complaining about fix? Oh right, it's false also looking at this what is the only difference is the type snapshot not found so I'm just gonna go ahead and say message ID is this or that we can just dedupe this code a bit this code predates my involvement with the project so I don't know like what stories it comes from uh, and I can just inline this fix because it's only used once. Look at that. And start is uh, only using the fix, but it's fine. Whatever. How do you map a lint violation to its respective rule? Great question. Let's let's cause one. Far wet. If you hover over it, you can see on the right after the message. Um, the tool and then some kind of error code or message ID, or rule ID. For example, when we <laughs> when I use an unused variable, there are three complaints. One is in PypeScript that it's unused, that's just built in. Another is ESLint's core novar rule. And if you click that, it'll bring you to the docs. So that's how you see that it's an ESLint rule by name, and then it's its docs, and then also types of ESLint says on no unused variables. Yay. Great question. Lady Blue Notes, hello again. How's it going? How's the TypeScript treating you? All right, so um, I'm actually just gonna, I like putting spaces around big properties when there's a comment above them. So. All right, so expect type snapshot. Let's see what happens if I PMPM lint and PMPM test this. Ah, uh, no one use vars as the rule, but what's the plugin? Yeah, there's no like, Standard way, I think, like let wat um, or var wat. I think there's no standard way to see the plugin, but 
uh, in flat config, but right now you can see it's uh, in the name there. Actually, well, you can go to the doc site generally. Um, I don't know how standardized this is. I forget how auto-generated this part is. Um, yeah. Let's see, actually, if I um, deprecated wat hi and then let hello equals wat. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, so I think it just says the, uh, directly says just the plugin there. Good question. All right. Uh, we happy about Snapshot? All right, no tests needed to be changed. That's not good, but uh, this is a hack. Process arg fix, add a fix, fix. Only update type snapshots with process.arg fix. Includes fix. I hate this. Oh, that reminds me. Uh, learner, I think I need to uh, put my schedule, put this to the side. I need, I think I need to go on vacation on like Christmas day and the day after. I <laughs> uh, don't think I'll be streaming. We'll see. Uh, TBD. All right. So fix the number 14. This is the best I can do without ESLint providing a native way for rules to know whether they are in fix uh, in fix mode. Disable only adds a fix function when if process.argbeat includes fix. I don't like this. I don't like it. It's a rough heuristic and I'll file a follow-up issue on improving it. That will be blocked on ESLint making an API, I assume. All right, well, oh shoot, did I post the issue? I did post the issue. And now we have a PR, oh boy, messages. Not my favorite PR ever, but shrug. Best we can do in the, by the way, if anyone thinks I'm wrong, if you see a better way to do this, please, for the love of heavens, let me know. Process.arg includes fix. It's like it won't work in Let's see. It won't work in this will own therefore stop. Uh, type snapshots from being updated in when ESLint is run in the editor. <sighs> run in, run, I should say, when ESLint is run programmatically through the node API such as as in an editor extension. There we go, that's more accurate. Eight ones. So what is GPG? Oh yeah, no, I don't know what happened. It was working for a while and then uh, and then it just started asking for it. It started freezing on my MacBook. That was incredibly annoying. I just disabled it there. I, I've been meaning to, to redo all my keys, which I'm being ever so slightly lazy about my security. Don't tell the security people. Uh, 8133. Sorry, what is 8133? Did I miss something? Oh, 
Oh yeah, Toby and Ilian, uh, you two streaming. That's really exciting. I like both of you. Tell each other I said hi. Yeah, docs are key. Oh, issue number? 8133. 813. 113. Funny how the issue is 14 and this is 113. Scaling. All right, what's failing? Oh, CodeCov patch. Right, right. Uh, CodeCov is complaining because I reduced the amount of code, <laughs> which but didn't add any tests. So the, uh, yeah, so this stuff isn't added, covered by tests. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, update site. Snapshot is a utility. Is it ever? We don't even have tests. We don't have tests for this. I'll just file a follow-up issue. This also isn't tested yet, so I'll file a follow-up issue for that, too. Oh, TS error codes. That's right, that's right, that's right. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, TypeScript has an error code. 6133 here. Um, error code for each of its, what it calls, diagnostics, most of which are used for, like, error or, or suggestions like this one. Um, all right, let's get over here. Yeah, so like this is a, what TypeScript calls a diagnostic. Each diagnostic has a code. Um, it's not stable what the codes are, like they can change version to version, but they tend to remain fairly still over the years. Sorry, good question. Uh, so follow-up issues I need to file are, um, let's see, uh, tooling, Add tests for type snapshots and bug type snapshots uh, can't infer fix mode slint fix mode without a process dot r fix right so these are the two follow up issues I'm gonna file otherwise or squash and merge. Well, good night, learner. I hope you have a good sleep. Uh, all right. Looks good so far. Okay, we'll see if I set up the uh, auto-publishing tokens, right? Look at all these CI jobs. All right, so a new issue. Uh, spinning out of 113. That PR included no test changes because the impacted lines weren't previously covered by tests at all. And I'm being accepting PRs to add tests in. Note that type snapshots impacts the file system, so it might be here non-trivial to set up testing for them. My hunch is to try a v.mock, uh, test mocking. There we go. Try using vtest mocking. Accepting PRs. Do I have a label for testing? Yes. Area. Wish I had a, I wish GitHub repos had like private uh, issue templates like I want to have a template for testing but I don't want like not maintainers to be able to fill it out area testing says accepting PRs boop only <laughs> the greatest project in the world hello sin devil love pie I love pie sin devil I love pie uh thanks for coming on I am working on ESLint plugin expect type I posted the uh issue that I was working on um in the chat it's pinned and i'm soon to work on other stuff i'm just filing issues now um sin dev I love pi. good to know thanks <laughs> got it um first follow-up issue filed this oh shoot i forgot to untag oh, the person okay this area wasn't covered by tests So just to recap, ESLint pl thanks, Pi. ESLint plugin expect type is an ESLint plugin that lets you put little commas in your code uh, to test what types things are. Um, I didn't write it, 
I just took over maintenance a bit back to help with it, and uh, now I'm fixing it up. Second thing is that I just did a real dirty fix that relies on process args, but uh, spinning out of 113. All right, as of 113, uh, type snapshots are only updated if process.argv.includes fix, but that doesn't account. That doesn't account for programmatic usage such as from uh, node slints of node of ESLint's node API, such as from an editor extension. Ooh, Apple Crumble. What is Saber.js? Is that the Halo Reach uh, flying thingy? GPU accelerated JavaScript advanced substation ass. You know, I, uh, something tells me having dot ass as your uh, file extension might limit your ability to uh, market this. In addition to um, this lovely, uh, I can only assume that's the bottom of an apple, and an apple uh, apple leaf coming out of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, as originally reported by 14, uh, type snapshots. What are, what are type snapshots? Uh, what's the syntax for them? Uh, uh, type snapshots should update if ESLint is run in fix mode. For a while, they were always being updated unless, uh, what is it? Stable was enabled. Now, Okay, so uh, so so status blocked, marking as blocked because nobody knows of an because uh, I believe there isn't yet an ESLint way that ESLint lets rules know whether they are being run in uh, fix the mode. <laughs> you didn't know, people have a standard format named dot s good for good for y'all real real glad developers are out there living their best lives like that unlike my camera which is living its worst life spin it around okay uh second issue filed fuck lang that's a that's a great language name uh <laughs> second issue filed the pr is just a heuristic and it'd be lovely to have a better way to know if we're in fix mode all right so that's fun um processed arg fix and yep yep so i'm gonna actually file an issue on eslint for this um Ooh, GitHub just froze. There it is. Okay. Uh, request uh, change not rule related. Change request. Um, provide a way for rules to know whether they are in fix mode. All right. Uh, I'm not clicking that YouTube link right now. Sorry. Uh. <laughs> uh but I will look at the YouTube link and the Wikipedia link, which I'm also not going to visit right just now. Uh, after the stream, thank you for uh, posting, y'all. Uh, pausing that that uh, that video on the side. Uh, ESLint version. Oh, I can't believe npmjs.com still doesn't have dark mode detection. When I'm in light mode, I want light mode. When I'm in dark mode, I want dark mode. Um, port. Uh, porting over to the ascent core there doesn't seem to so at least one community plugin this plugin expect type uh ooh, my back oh my god i don't know if anyone heard that but it was incredibly satisfying uh 
um, as a rule has a rule whose fixer operates on the on a separate file in the file system, not the file being linted. That fixer, um, it's separate snapshot file and pass system, not the file. That fixer has no way of knowing whether, no native way of knowing that rule has, that fixer function, that rule has no way of knowing whether it's in, whether ESLint is being run in fix mode. All right, I'm actually starting to overheat, this is great. Also, people online have been getting me paranoid about carbon dioxide or whatever, so I'm opening my door for a bit. Um, that means the fixer can't reliably know whether it should update the file snapshot. Because fixers run even if ESLint doesn't isn't in fix mode, fixer can't allow to know whether it should, should update the file snapshot. Libass, amazing. Um, bah, ESLint, I, I posted an RFC. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna propose that um, we add some, what I proposed in perhaps pose. I'm going to be a little snarky here uh, a year ago in perhaps general a rule is equivalent of can rule a rules context objects uh, contain info on whether the rule is on whether the fixer is being run and or two thoughts actually can we avoid running fix functions when not in fix mode alternately or the fixer passed to the fix function all right, so I'm saying like, can we can we work around this? This is something somewhat analogous to what I proposed a year ago for parser. Note that that RFC was for parsers, while this issue is for rules. I'd be happy to send an RFC and for this to be. All right. You can just do one or two. You don't need it. Yep, yep. Uh, Hyper calls, right? Different repo. Posted. And pinned to the chat. I'm going to share a bit and cross reference. Oops. Uh, filed. Good, good catch though, by the way. If you think I'm doing little typos or missing out some nice little easier ways of doing things, let me know. I always like learning. Filed an issue on ESLint's core to see if we can get a better native solution. Alrighty. I love that the chat today has ranged from like type two of error codes to strut that ass. Good stuff. I am just following up. I worked around this by adding a process that includes check to know if it's in CLI fix mode. Not a great solution, just a heuristic, expanded heuristic. Uh, Boop. 
also filed an issue on ESLint to see if we can get a better native solution. If anyone's curious, the Discord chat is there. It's the public ESLint Discord, nothing private. And with that done, uh, I think I'm good to quit Discord and count this this issue PR thingy as resolved. All right, let's move on to more stuff in ESLint plugin expect type, such as, have we published a version? We haven't. Oh, eBay, I think I need to set up tokens. Uh, I'm not going to do that on stream. I'm just going to put this to the side. I'll publish a new version, new miner after the stream. Yeah, somehow I've learned the hard way. Actually, no, I think maybe the, I hope the easy way, maybe the hard way to not do token things on stream. Actually, no, I have learned the hard way. Sindeb, you, or Pi, you have some very, uh, very in-depth graphical stuff going on there. Very cool. All right, so types are checked by a simple string comparison. Blocked, it's a feature, but it's blocked uh, on external API. What's going on here? Um, so, okay, this is... Uh, interesting. Yeah, I'm just going to leave this as is. Uh, documentation, explain assignability versus display checking. What is going on here? I actually don't want to work on docs. I want to work on features. Um, add code coverage track per 54 review. I think I did this. Oh wait, I, I I did this, did this as part of onboarding to. So I have this uh, create TypeScript app uh, repo. Um, that's like a nice template for TypeScript repos, and I set up ESN plugin expect type and a whole bunch of other. Uh... Ooh, look, GitHub's freezing. Chrome's freezing. Isn't that fun? Whole other thing there. Okay. Um, let's see. What do I want to work on? I, you know what I want to do? I want to work on um, allow specifying multiple TypeScript versions. This thing was of interest to me. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because there are like at least two people in the chat who are like DevRel or Dev Avocado or like Dev Docs people. Uh, sometimes I'm in a mood for. Um, Sometimes I'm in a mood for, for docs. Sometimes I'm not. I don't really like working on docs on stream because it's very, like, language intense. I like, like, saying things aloud to myself in my spare time. So, yeah. Definitely need to be in the right mood. Next up, adding support for, mul for providing multiple TS. Actually, wait a second. Wait a second. I remember now. I had started a discussion ages ago. About splitting up expect into targeted rules. Um, uh, I remember this now. Um, eh, Sixty-nine. So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna do a tech debt a tooling refactor. Refactor large expect rule into. I do live streams of writing articles. Not my favorite to do on stream. Yeah. God, my cat is staring out the window with his butt in the air. So we got some photos of that. Good stuff. Okay. Um, roll into granular pieces. Uh, so yeah, I had posted a discussion a while ago of like the expect rule is huge. It's a chungus, as they say. Uh, it's like almost a thousand lines. It's like 700 plus lines. Um, a lot of this stuff is, uh, I don't know, specific to one little area of the rule. So I'm going to refactor this a little bit. Uh, TSDev, dot change. Okay. Expect source rules, expects.ts is quite large, regardless of whether it gets split up into smaller rules. I'd like to, um, Refactor it to be easier to work with. So 
accepting PRs. It's just like a tooling cleanup. I'm gonna assign myself. I'll do that. I like uh, I like refactors. It's like my favorite thing to do on stream. One of. Let's do that, and then later I can work on like more uh, tech thingies because it'll be easier once it's split up. Yay, tech refactors. Going to split. Try splitting up the large expect rule file into composable pieces. All right, this should be fun. So let's fold all and just see how does this thing actually work. Um, we've got going to have collapsed on the left and stuff on the right. Uh, so we have our messages, which is just what you're allowed to say. Why? And the message IDs is key of type of that makes sense. Such as is only ever referenced later in the the rules metadata. So fun fact, ESLint lets you create rule. Actually, I think this create rule comes from yeah type of ESLint utils. Cool, cool, cool. Um, so that takes in metadata, which is like docs and the schema. Uh, for the options, All right? And then where is the creates, which runs validate. Why validate is its own function, I don't know. It's only ever done in one place. So I'm just gonna go ahead and inline it as a function. There's no need for it to be separate. Fun fact. Um, ESLint rules create functions typically um, return an object keying tree selectors to logic to run on nodes of those types, but this doesn't actually use any tree selectors, selectors so it's just an empty object. Right. Um, so that's a little bit of change. Didn't need to like delete any in unused imports or anything, but okay. So next up we have a two slash assertion. So immediately I'm thinking, okay, two slash assertions is one of several types of assertions this rule works with. So I'm going to move this into a new file. I'm using the, I have to restart my ESLint server, two slash assertion, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna make this uh, two slash dot, Yes. Fold up. So anything that mentions two slash, I'm just gonna move into that file. Um, so let's see. So the way this actually works is we have this, I'm, I'm like learning slash relearning this now. Inside the role we have this parse assertions function that so I'm just gonna move that to new file too. Uh, parse assertions in a ooh, TypeScript complaint. Uh, parse assertions that didn't work. Move to a new file. <laughs> what is happening? Right, so parse assertions is its own thing. There we go. Uh, what's, oh man, look at this. This this. Uh, <laughs> um, Almost all the imports got moved. That's so funny. Um, so now, now this rule. Oh my god! More, so much of this rule just got moved. Now it's like three hundred eighty lines instead of almost or over seven hundred. Great. Um, so I'm actually. Let's see. I see we're still importing some stuff back from expect.js. For example, we're importing assertion. By the way, I mentioned cat earlier and I realized the internet has the concept of a cat tax. So because he just got up and started moving around. Surprisingly happy the way I'm holding him now. Toodaloo. By the way, I always forget to mention regularly, anyone want to talk about anything, let me know, always happy to chat. But yeah, so I don't want the types for the parts assertions function to be imported by the expect rule, which then imports 
parts of the surgeon. So I'm just going to move these, move this over to um, parse assertions using the TypeScript little helper. <sighs> parse assertions, that doesn't need to be there. Funny. Uh, where does. What? Why is parse assertions no longer being. What is this expect.1.ts? What? Is... What? Did I accidentally move expect into. I accidentally moved expect into its own file. God, I'm just going to start over. <laughs> oh, I forgot I even had tests running. Oops. All right. So, <laughs> expect ts. All right. Um, validates to slash assertion, assertion. All right. So, I'm going to move this stuff. I'm just going to move these things into uh, a new file to start. And that file will be named incorrectly as two slash. Let's call that assertions. TS. Nice cup. Thank you. Yeah, the, that cat's my favorite. Jerry. It's a skull cup. Happy belated Halloween. It is currently December. All right, um, so yeah, looking at assertions. So right now we're just parse, uh, exporting a couple of uh, types. So let's, let's do more with these. Um, I'm actually going to move this to file assertions. Uh, ooh, syntax error. So that needs to be moved also move to file assertions. So we got, um, assertion is the single assertion, which can be one of these types. Um, I see that we have an interface for two slash assertion, but, um, these don't for some reason. So I'm just going to make an interface for each of them. Interface snapshot assertion. And I'm just going to, I don't know why this isn't read only. So I'm going to add read only there. Uh, so let's say snapshot assertion. Then we have export interface manual assertion, which is these things. I don't know why expected again is not read only. So I'm going to do that. So snapshot assertion, manual assertion. Oh, and uh, two slash assertion, which was, oh, geez. Assertion type two slash, okay. Also, I don't know why some are marked as read only, but others aren't. I, this is a code style that like I used to kind of like, and now I'm like, ugh, oh, of just like always manually marking things as read only. I personally tend to do a pretty functional style programming, not purely functional, but like I don't really modify parameters. So I, I personally never needed to like work much with um, like making sure things are read only, but I understand why it's useful. Not letting people modify data they're not supposed to modify. Cool. Chrissy's out here uh, networking. Always fun. All right. So now we have assertions, which is just the types for them. It's not even. <laughs> it's not even the the logic. Uh, let's move syntax error up there. Also, this is totally nitpicky, but alphabetization of the assertion types. Okay. Um. So that's, that's a good start. What's the next problem? Aha. Uh -huh. Assertion not expected equals get type snapshot. Why are we doing that? Okay. Uh, well, I guess not. Weird, but okay, I'll, I'll get to that later. <laughs> what do you think they've never used before? Um, tagged or discriminated union. That's like a, a big, like first wacky thing. A lot of people see in TypeScript it comes up a lot. Yeah. Read only is pr pretty sweet. It just says, uh, Hey, you can't reassign. So like, uh, when I said, 
read only here, type equals all mad because I was setting assertion expected equals good stuff. It's a whole world out there. All right, let's see what uh, other problems we have. Assertion type is two slash. I don't know why that wasn't there before. Okay. Let's see, assertion, parse two slash assertion. Okay. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna make an assertions directory and move it outside of rules. So I have assertions type and let's make a parsing file. So let's move parse two slash assertion into that parsing file. Feels like a reasonable place for it. Um, all right, so, all right, so what's happening here is we have this parse two slash assertion, which previously was returning back a, oh, I see why the types didn't include the read only assertion type into slash assertion instead in the union because parse two slash assertion was returning an object without the assertion type. But now we don't need to add that type back in. Love it. Okay. Uh, so already we have some like uh, extracted out helpers, and we've we've successfully gotten rid of about a little over a hundred lines of code from this thing, mostly uh, types, and then this parse two slash two slash assertion function. Um, TS two point doesn't have is variable statements. Um, I saw there was an issue somewhere else about TypeScript support range, so I'll uh, <laughs> I'll fix that up later. But okay, let's see what else there is. Oh yeah, validate. I I was gonna move this whole validation function in line into the rule because there's no need for it to be um, standalone. Let me just put it in there. Boop. Chrissy and Toby, uh, you two are both awesome people and I'm excited about you collaborating, but yes, let's do that in your DMs or elsewhere. So I got TypeScript to do here, haha. <laughs> That's okay. Um, let's see. So I see there's this parse assertions function. I'm also gonna move that into uh, the parsing file. But you know, I actually wanna, I wanna uh, two slash, I'm gonna make a dedicated files for each of these big functions. So let's move to a new file. Ugh, I always forget it. It does that like immediately for you without offering. I used the wrong one. Uh, okay. So now we have parse assertions.ts. Ah, with a is first online uh, helper. So I'm gonna move that is first online to a file. Details ts. I see, I saw that quickly because um, it was importing from expect.js or rather this expect.ts file in under the hood and I don't want cross references. What is this complaining about? Oh, I see why validate was, I see why validate was a separate function. Okay, because this thing wants to be able to return if, uh, <laughs> it wants to be able to return if we uh, if we're looking at a file that we don't understand. Okay, well, um, let's see if I can refactor this a bit. Um, right now, the way that this create function does, so the way the rule works is it does a bunch of magic, not magic, it, it uses TypeScript APIs to get what's called a language service for the file, which is the thing that runs program type checking. It has APIs like, uh, what does this one do? Like get type at location type thing. Um, so I'm gonna say, what if we extract out um, const language service equals, instead of all this stuff manually, equals create language service for context context and I don't believe we need options. Uh, yeah, we don't. If there's no language service, 
uh, return the object. So let's let's move this to a util file. Export function. Create language surface for context. Uh, source services. Let's call this services for now. Um, boop. Hmm, looks like there's uh, looks like there's some stuff here that's gonna. Be, you know, I don't think this is uh the right way to go. I think the. I'm going to need diagnostics also. So that's unfortunate. Yeah, this, this file is unnecessary. Um, I'm just going to still create the language service normally. All right, so. Uh, OK, now it creates happy. So here's what we're doing. We do the parser services in the program. We get the source file uh, from file name. Is file name ever used again? Yes, it is. Um, oh, geez. If there is no source file, so like the TS config isn't, doesn't know it, I'm going to fix the casing there. Then we give that as a complaint. Um, uh, as an optimization, if the source file doesn't have any uh, expect any uh, triggering comments fail. So we don't uh, avoid um, asking for diagnostics performance altogether. All right, so we, we get the language service and diagnostics and checker and stuff. Um, then we parse assertions. For any duplicates, we complain. Uh, we then, let's see. So complain for duplicates. I'm just putting these comments to organize my thoughts. Here it's complain for not found. Uh, Complain for syntax errors. Uh, <laughs> what I find interesting here is why did we create the snapshots in one place and then get type snapshot elsewhere? Is it a performance thing? Yeah, because it reads uh, from the JSON file. FSE, oh, FS extra. Ensure file sync, read JSON. Okay, so maybe I want to get rid of that dependency later. No, we'll see. Uh, so this is complaint for syntax errors. Um, this is retrieve or hydrate type snapshots. Uh, and then this is complain for, what is this doing? Complain for unmet expectations and assertions which is complaint for unmet expectations. Prep, so this is prep to unmet expectations and then unused assertions. Unused assertions. All right, so I've identified there are like several different little areas of things that it does. And I'm just gonna make, I think a, um, I think I wanna make a, uh, I don't know like a utility function for each of those. I like splitting things up. Also, I like, we Alfred Heisink. Um, so uh, reports for duplicate or, well, I don't know what I just changed there. Report duplicates, duplicates. Uh, so I'm just gonna move these functions out down, function, report, duplicates. Uh, 
What type is duplicates? Duplicates is a read-only number. That's fun. You have a lot of questions. Go ahead and ask. Oh, um, I don't know if these will answer the questions, but uh, I do have a primer post. Tends to be helpful. So report duplicates with the context. Um, reports. Uh, not found errors, context, say diagnostics, source file, error lines. That looks like that's what that's looking for. Oh boy. Yes, yes, let that rule context. See if that's uh, <laughs> that, that's fun. This requires generics, doesn't it? Ugh. Message IDs, options. Let's extract this into type. So there's a type for the context, like this object provided to rules, and it's kind of hard to type. So expect rule context. Let's call this expect rule context. All right, so we report duplicates, then we have context, expect rule context. I'm not at this point convinced that what I'm doing is actually worth it. Uh, that won't just make the hard code hard to read, but this is a good exercise for me to understand the code. Let's infer, definitely not any of it. I know how that got in there. Source file. Function, reports, uh, syntax, errors, syntax. Context, spec rule, context, syntax errors. What type of syntax errors? Read only syntax error array. Good stuff. Whoop. Context, syntax errors. So that's fun. Why is this complaining? Oh boy, two different things it means by uh, syntax error. So that's nice. Where does this syntax error come from? Oh, that's, I was using a built-in syntax error, not the one from assertions. Turns out there's a built-in global syntax error type. Isn't that fun? All right. Report duplicates, report not found errors, report syntax errors. Um, all right, so these type assertions, I'm uh, not a big fan of how this is like done weirdly. So, hmm, whatever, I'll keep going. Function, report, unmet expectations, context, rule, context. This one's going to be a whole bunch of them. Let's see. We want context and we want unmet expectations. That's what's being passed in, which is type read only unmet expectation array. And then we also have source file. Wow. That's all of them except for ooh, options and file name. Context, I get file name. That's all that file name was. And then what was options? Right, context, options. And what type is options? Options, <laughs> great. I don't know what I just did, but look at that. All right. So these are all split up. It's basically the same code, just uh, a little easier for me personally to understand. And we wanted context, options, um, expectations, source file. Um, now it's unused assertions 
context, expect little context, and unused assertions. Good, good. And this is type number array. What on earth? Why is that typed as iterable number? Fine, whatever. Iterable of number, such as an array. <laughs> Someone was real excited to use their TypeScript types on this one. Uh, it's technically more accurate to use iterable. I wonder if this is a Dan Vandergam thing. Maybe. <laughs> anyway, Dan Vandergam is the author of the Effective TypeScript book, which at least in this upcoming edition, maybe in the first one, uh, recommends using iterable instead of array in certain cases. Uh, thought that was funny. Generally, iterable describes uh, any iterable object in JavaScript or TypeScript, such as a number. Sorry, such as an array. Yeah. Ba -ba -ba. All right, so I've split out a bunch of report functions down here. Uh, so I'm just going to collapse them for now. About 500 lines total. And then, interestingly, uh, report. I'm going to uh, function. Hmm. Is the checker and language service only ever used in. What is get expect type failures? Right, that's this thing. So interestingly, the language service is only used in get expect type failures. So I feel like I want to extract it out and just use it in get expect type failures, because otherwise, like, it's it's confusing to me. Yet it was asked for so early in the program. So I'm just gonna zoop, go ahead and replace language service with a program in the params and then move the language service inside program. Now the main rule code. Ooh, any thoughts on tsdocs.dev? Let's take a look. Bro, oh, I've seen this. I forget where. Uh, yeah, it's cool. I like it. Um, let's see. TS API utils. I've, I've never been thinking, oh, yeah, this is nice. Uh, performance could use some work. I feel like I uh, asked for this. I um, feel like they don't do a thorough job of pre-caching like really pop all the really popular packages because like TS API utils has like seven million weekly downloads, almost eight. But yeah, no, I think it's uh, it's a really good idea. It makes it a lot easier because right now I have to manually do TS API utils on a GitHub IO deploy, and it's a pain in the butt. Yeah, the, f the fact that it exists, and it's also in beta, right? Like, I'm not pooping on their, their work here. It did say beta, right? Yeah, alpha even. Yeah, no, this is a really good idea. I like it. Cool. And gig, Toby, I'm glad, glad it's working out for you. Uh, yeah, so this language service thing, which is just one of the things you can get from TypeScript, it's uh, really only done inside get expect type failures. Um, so the main rule doesn't need to know about it. Um, don't need these comments, I think, anymore. Yeah, once it works with packages. Um, so now I'm wondering, this program. Okay, so the program is actually used by things. Uh, it's, it's used to get the source file, the check up. Oh. The checker is only ever used inside get expect type failures. So we can just go ahead and zoink that out. Uh, boo, boo, boo. Um, what else is there? Let's see, source file, these things in program. Source file is in fact used in a few different places, so we don't do anything there. Diagnostics, aha, diagnostics is only ever used in report not found errors. Really? I am surprised. Okay. Uh, uh, to avoid reporting any 
uh, before asking for type diagnostics or type information altogether. Cool, so diagnostics just needs to be done in report not found errors. Yay. And it comes from the program. Nice, nice. In fact, I can inline this a little bit. Yeah, it's fine as is. Okay, um, let's see. What is match read only array? What is this? This is part of get expect type failures. Match assertions to the first node that appears on the line they apply to. T is for each child isn't available as a met. Okay, you know what? You know what? I don't like having to account for very old TS versions because these, this was first written like at least a year or three ago. Like I'm pretty sure we don't need to support TS 2.0 on like five something now. Anyway, something I've already noted as we'll tackle later. Um, get noted position, get node for expect type. These are like small utilities. I want to move get expect type failures to a new file. Oh my God. Why is TypeScript crashing so much? Apparently it worked. Um, get expect type fails. I don't like having these alongside the rule. I wanna. I'm gonna move tor to that folder. Yeah. Make sure nothing's getting imported from <laughs> expect. There we go. So I have some types to move into this file. Let's move these over. And then assertion comes from the types for assertion things. Report unmet expectations. Cool, so at this point the rule and what I'm trying to do is just keep the rules logic inside the rule, like context.report stuff, and then anything else like parsing or whatnot that's not specific to ESLint. Uh, I want to move over to like uh, a, a standalone thing. Eventually, I would love to make like standard node API or like standard importable in node functions for this so that it's not bound to the lint rule. All right. Um, this I'm going to move get node position. I think that's. Get node position. Yeah, that's a TS thing. So nodes. I'm gonna make like a, a node file. There we go. That doesn't need to come from expect. That can come from dot slash nodes. What else is coming from expect? Get language service host. Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, let's call this ts.t, uh, uh, typescript.ts, don't love that name, but whatever. Get language service host. Toby, you're playing with uh, the TypeScript ESLint playground? That playground makes me so happy. Uh, get node for expect type. Uh, something tells me I might end up splitting this file up too. Um, where's get node from expect type? Yeah, that playground's awesome. Uh, shout out one of our maintainers, Armano2, has done a lot of work on it. I think Armano first made the playground. Um, and then also, like, we've iterated on it a bunch over the years. Yeah, it's a great thing. Work of art, in a sense. Okay. Uh, let me just collapse these reporters. Don't really want to read them. Expect rule context. Let's move that above the rule. It would be nice to have like a, a 
type for this, like type rule context for uh, uh, rule extend tses lint dot rule context inf unknown unknown as in for unknown equals rule extends let's see for message IDs okay oh, just say rule I'm missing a angle bracket there type of expect does this work typescript magics here Oh, it's a rule module. Uh, is a rule context for can I use infer? No, infer has to be in the conditional type. Rule extends rule context infer message IDs uh, infer options if so have the options otherwise never does this work expect rule context is yeah haha <laughs> conditional types so i've just made like a generalized helper for uh for this i feel like i should file this as a feature request on um type 2 ps lint uh and it's broken so you know what? whatever i'm just gonna I don't really want to do that. Someone cares enough to do it, but it's almost never like really useful. So I remember later on. One of my heuristics is if I come to the same idea multiple times, I'm like, oh yeah, multiple times, then I'll file an issue. Okay. Right. Um, what else have we got in this function? Match read only array, which is used exclusively in expect uh, type failures. And just gonna move these into the TypeScript function or file rather. And lastly, it's line of position, which is only used once. Function line of position. Leave that there. Question. Your question I've answered. What's up? Always happy to, to answer things. All right, so I, I'm somewhat happier about how this is looking. Um, it's a little more code overall, but I can actually understand and read through the file and figure out how it's supposed to work. Um, one thing here that's annoying to me is this type assertions coming from parse assertions. So, but wait. We always populate the expected field on snapshot assertions anyway. So there's no actual reason I can see to uh, to delay load this. I'm just I'm just gonna have it always be there. And then expected will be see this is where it's complaining that I missed it once I made it required. I'm gonna gonna populate them that way. Voila. A type snapshot which comes from utils snapshot well for now i can import from there but something tells me that this snapshot only actually makes sense in the parse type assertion there oh no it makes sense in both because it has both getting and updating okay fine whatever um file name what is file name uh, something tells me file name is probably the same um, as the source file to do same as the source files name but I want to ver verify that um, the type snapshot for the file name and the snapshot name expected oh, okay what are you complaining about string or undefined 
Okay, so it actually, it's required, but it might not exist. Great. String or undefined. Alrighty. And what are we complaining about? Parse assertions, file name. It's looking happy, looking good. Could we build a parser live? That's definitely too much work. And I, <laughs> I've never built a good parser myself. Uh, good question though. If you want to build it, that'd be, that'd be cool. But uh, I'm, I think I'd rather do something that people would actually use. Um, like, yes, it's good as an educational exercise or coding exercise to build a parser, but uh, doing it live would be a lot. Oh no, line of position actually is useful outside of parse assertions or wherever I moved it. Time to move it into utils. Move to file utils. Um, building a parser live would be a great like conference talk though. Okay. I am pretty happy with how things have turned out actually. Um, why do we use message IDs? Why does it need to be uh, exported? I don't think it does. Uh, I guess the rule is exported. So yep, yep. Hmm. Duplicates, not fan errors, syntax errors, not expectations, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so let's start testing and linting and stuff, see who complains. Expected blank line, oh. Everyone seems happy. Let's try the tests. Love it, the CJS build is deprecated. Cool. So test pass, which means I think in parse assertions, I actually can use source file, file name, pretty sure. Because it, it the source file was retrieved by file name. Yeah, love tests. And we have a complaint. V test. Everyone seems happy. It runs, sure, why not? I think I hit save or something. All right, well, this is great. Um, it's first online. Where is this used? This is used in parse assertions, whereas line of position is in, whew, excuse me, parses. Oh, we already have a utils folder. So let's see if my utils should go there. Uh, create rule is like a standalone thing. Diagnostics is around TypeScript diagnostics. Uh, lock is around uh, I don't like the this style of import. I'm going to say ts dot source file ts lock uh, for ts node. Update import. Yeah, just a little a uh, little more specific of the name there. Everything's complaining because uh <laughs> I updated files in place. Okay, let's move line of position to lock. Uh calls it line of position comes from these places updating my imports wish the tests were faster all right uh, so the last util is is first online which uh, is only ever used in Parse assertions. We'll just uh, we'll just put it in the same function. Whatever. There we go. All right. 
Now I'm happy. So we have source has assertions, rules, and utils. Also an index. Now under assertions, we have get expect type failures with some types. Uh, wondering if I should move expect type failures into the types. I think I will. Eh, I think it's fine. Fine as is. Parse two slash assertions is its own thing. Uh, ooh. Maybe I should move this outside of assertions into. Yeah, I'm going to move this into its own thing. Uh, let's call it failures. Uh, get expect type failures. Oops, meant to move failures. Then yeah, let's move this into a types folder. Uh, enter new file path, I call it types. Yeah, that's a little, that's nicely delineated. I like that. Okay. And then TypeScript should really belong in utils, I think. Oh, get node at position actually there, that's uh, that's already a TypeScripty thing, again. Yes, for each child. Wait a second. Okay. <sighs> Assertions, failures, rules, utils, and let's call this locations. A little more descriptive as a file name. All right, what else we got here? TypeScript has get node for expect type, match read only array. Yeah, this is like, like all TypeScripty things. Uh, let's move this here, but I see there's also a types file. Okay, that's set required not nullable what is where is this used did i write this diagnostic with start set required not nullable whatever well anyway i'm happy uh refactor split chore split our uh, split functionality internally So what I did here, I liked. I like how like almost exactly half of my viewers dropped from eighteen to nine. Uh, was <laughs> I very laboriously refactored uh, to satisfy this issue that I just filed? Uh, so what did I actually do here? Let me. I'm gonna make a draft PR and link it so that I can send that link before filling out the description. Uh, splits out um, most uh, the not specific to ESLint hopefully not specific ES functionality logic from the expect rule into source failures source assertions and source utils parsing assertions out from source code source failures Generating unmatched unmet complaints are determining assertions and uh, miscellaneous helpers. All right, this is easier for me to read and understand. But my general, uh, I don't know, knowledge hunch here is that. Um, Whenever I do a big refactor, I always want to wait on it, like overnight or some such, over days, because it's hard to, to really be objective when you just read it something on the thing. So what I'm going to do is uh, table this for now. I'm just going to come back to it later. After, of course, posting on 
social media. Uh, I started 328. It's now 418. Only 50 minutes. A little long refactor. Got the PR up, but we'll wait a bit before merging. Yeah, exactly. Like, the, does what I wrote actually make sense the next day? Oftentimes, no. Especially when I'm overtired. I'm like, oh my god, these obvious typos. Um, and also, um, just following up, agreed with Dan BK. Um, users are perfectly happy with the one expects so far, and nobody has spoken out in strong favor not in favor of splitting it up let's keep it solo for now yeah i'm glad thanks uh refactor pr keep it to run rule for now and just refactor its internals. Thanks. Closed as resolved. What a nice discussion. Closing out and discussion too. Yeah, so Dan Vanderkam, I actually referenced earlier that he's the author of Effective TypeScript. Um, he also uh, is a contributor, I think, whatever you call the maintainer, writes on this Dan B D K, And he's not on the Fediverse. Is he on Blue Sky? All right, what to work on next? Well, I don't really want to uh, do any more big tech stuff because I've got this refactor PR. So instead, I actually will go to doc. Chrissy, you were right. Sometimes I do docs on stream. Um, have I read Martin Fowler's refactoring second edition? Maybe. I think I read it many years ago in a book club, but I don't know that I have recently. Yeah, I'm just looking at my shelf of uh, books. No, I haven't. Is it good? Would you recommend it? Uh, so I guess in the meantime, for now, I'll go on to docs. This issue. As always, if there's anything y'all would like me to do in this area, let me know. Or things to talk about. Since the big refactor is pending, moving on to docs. old school job cool i've we like martin fowler right i vaguely remember having a positive uh opinion of martin fowler i remember that photo uh with the hat oh wikipedia a blicky what the hell is a blicky oh he popularized japan oh wait is he gang gang of four whatever they're called okay good for him All right, so what's happening here? This display, uh, assignability, uh, where do I have this uh, on this side? Um, try main, get pull. It's like the Uncle Bob era of Desi. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, okay, so. IDE support, expect type. Assignability checking is different from two slash style assertions. So visual. Uh, do you have any more? Oh, I never liked it. Oops. Um, okay. So the difference is um, 
Uh, okay, I think I see what, what this is talking about. The issue is saying assignability versus display checking. Right, right. This is related to um, the thing that we can't do yet. Um, the uh, There was the issue that was blocked. What was it? What number was this? Oh, yeah. Types are checked by simple, simple string comparison. So what's happening now... Um, and yeah, I do got you, mini scruff. Um, what's happening now is the plugin does display checking. Um, so it literally just checks if the string displays the same, like number one or two is different from one space or space two. Like it's just a string comparison. Um, there's a that's different from um, structural checking. Um, so that's a whole thing. Um, structural checking would be like checking, okay, I see it's one or two, it's the same structure, even if you did one or two versus two or one. Um, and actually that's what this API's, or this, this issue is for, which actually reminds me, um, we can actually mark this as, uh, accepting PRs, um, because previously it was um, blocked on a type relationship API and types it specifically an assignability check an API, which, oh my gosh, oh wait, no, wrong link. Um, the TypeScript team actually merged recently. Thank you, Jake Bailey, hero. Jake, if you're here, hero, hero. So um, as of this, we can consider this feature unblocked. Also, so uh, assignability checking or is type assignability two is uh, previously marked as internal private method on TypeScript type checker, which can take in two types and tell you whether one of them is assignable to the other. Not if they are the same, but like if one is a subtype, like string versus the literal A, you know, one is assignable to the other, the other not. So, um, that's very exciting. That was marked as um, internal only for the longest time, uh, but like <laughs> people just started using it. So eventually we said in TypeScript be a slint. Uh, well, we're, we're gonna use start using in our latest, in our next major, please, because we, we need it. It's blocking a lot of really nice slint rules. And uh, so Jake was like, you know what? This is fine. You're right, y'all are right. Uh, it was just a, like a motivation to really look into it, make sure it won't blow anything up. And now hopefully in the next TypeScript version, it will be uh, available, hopefully. Let's, um, this wouldn't be the default behavior for the plugin, but this should, but it should be a separate type of assertion. Let's say, expect type assignable to and VK. Yeah, so I'm just gonna say uh, accepting PRs. Now that, uh, oh yeah. Um, if someone is attempting to author a PR for this, feel free to say uh, checker as any dot is type assignable to in the interim uh, and TypeScript uh, types don't yet include is type assignable to, feel free to just do check as any. Cool. So actually this is like a interlude triaging the issue. Um, Oop, and in the meantime, also opening up an issue. The issue that was previously blocked on a type assignability API and TypeScript. Yay, Jake Bailey and team. Jake isn't like all the things I think. 
I'll have to remember to untag him from other stuff. Okie dokie. Oh, I should have, before opening this, uh, <laughs> uh, feature, um, add a new assertion for assignability. Not display checking. That uses assignability checking. Yeah. Okay, so what's happening here is back to the issue I actually wanted to, to work on, number uh, 50, wherever it went, uh, <laughs> is um, the repo, or the docs never explicitly state that like this does display checking. Uh, terminology. So I'm just going to write docs here real quick, see if that's the right place for it. Uh, this uh, plugin generally uh, applies uh, display check. Mm, now I'm thinking like, okay, this would really go in the expect uh, docs. Oh no. Oh, I have to restart here some server. Expect.md. Here we go. Types are compared with paired using display checking. Oh yeah, GitHub uh, GitHub notes admonition. They have like their own way of doing their admonition syntax. Here we go. Ooh, um, Miniscraft, great question. I have create TypeScript app repo. Would I recommend it for a project that is using uh, HTMX and just a bit of JSTS? I have not tried HTMX. I keep forgetting what it is. Oh, good for you, get a open source accelerator. Um, probably not, honestly. I mean, you can try it. Actually, no, no, let me amend that answer. I would recommend my repo, my create TypeScript app thing in general for any repo that has any TypeScript in it. Um, the CTA template adds in a lot of stuff that's not just raw TypeScript tooling. It adds in like issue templates and uh, GitHub workflows to automate pull request review labels and stuff like that. Um, essays. Oh boy. I'm clicking the title and it's not loading. Um, what is this response time? Is it my internet or them? Um, so yeah, even if you're repo doesn't use a lot of TypeScript. It's nice just to have that stuff there. And I'd also love to see if like there are any bugs you find, like things like edge cases. Still, <laughs> yeah. sorry, yeah, I got distracted. Um, you know, what I'm really doing is adding a, um, a GitHub notes uh, here. Um, comments are check, uh, comment or types are compared with display checking um, ch -ch -ch. what was I gonna say um, type compared with display checking meaning a direct string comparison between their actual type and the string comments or snapshot and then we actually have an issue uh, 18. 18 tracks adding issue number 18 tracks adding a new assertion for assignability checking. Yeah, I don't love that they like did it this way. I don't like all caps. To me, it's kind of ugly. I kind of, I really like the like markdown and um, docusaurus admonitions. That's like what I've come to really like. I, I'm sure there are reasons for both team or for both whatever is like why they did it the way they did, but you know, this is just how I like it. Um, get rid of that T. Okay. So check out B. Yes. Display checking docs. Um, 
add explanation of display check. Cool. I don't think we need a lot of code, you know, terminology here. Just, uh, you know. Yeah, DocuSource is great. Just like a very brief little shebang. Let's draft. Uh, quick little docs PR for the. Aha. Uh -huh. For the display checking note. Cool beans. So I actually already linked to expect type in the readme, so I don't feel a need to do that here. Let's fixes number 50. Adds a brief note in the expect rule docs. Since I don't feel think we need more than that, given the readme links to neighboring practice. I started calling what others might say competitors uh, as uh, neighbors, as in like, oh, you all work in the same area. You don't need to compete, compete, you know? Rising tide, it's all both kind of mentality. Water break. Water break. Let's just make sure this is rendering nicely. Clicking the wrong one. Well, that's ugly. What's, what's going on there? GitHub. I don't like, don't love the look of this. Yeah, I, not, nah. See issue number 18 for discussion around adding reword the C. <laughs> yeah, don't love this. This, uh, what? Display checking docs. Let's update that URL. And I don't wanna say meaning because that's superfluous here. push all right cool um oh shoot i forgot to uh mention number 14 oh this there is currently a bug where snapshot is up to i fixed that like an hour ago hour and a half what did i change in the readme Nothing. Okay. Number fourteen. So actually, the the issue is uh, one one five, and it's it doesn't need to be the so strong and red of an emoji. It can just be like a warning one. Uh, there is a currently unknown. There are known issues around detecting whether to uh, automatically update snapshots. You may need to manually update them if running, if uh, editors are not Editor extensions are likely to not work with, uh, not apply updates automatically. Try running ESLint with fix on the command line or manually updating. Failing that, manually updating. Yeah, I'll just add this as a docs mention 115. Whoopsies. 
should have mentioned that in the pull request. Ah, uh, well. Anyway, explanation of display checking is looking good. CodeCov's happy with my docs PR. Yeah, go me. So I think I'm, uh, I'm gonna finish up the docs stuff and then I'm gonna head out for the day. It's been, whatever, a couple hours, a little more. So, getting tired. Uh, cool, let's see what else there is in the issue. So if anyone wants to talk about other things, let me know. Um, oh, is that all? Uh, oh, right, 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 TypeScript version support. Yeah, so I'm definitely not gonna support 2.0 for TypeScript, that's very old. Uh, instead, I'd like to um, uh, um, I'd, instead I'd like to use the definitely type support window. Uh, ba -ba -ba. TypeScript version support. Let's just add this. Yay me! Thanks, Toby. Yay you! Uh, PSLint plugin expect type mirrors the definitely types TypeScript support window. Roughly, that's major versions of TypeScript less than two years old. Oh boy. Great. So now I can say, remove this thing. Ah, ha, ha. Uh, if ts dot is variable state, variable statement on node. Yay, and we don't have that uh, unnecessary type assertion now. Hooray. Also, wasn't there like another thing mentioned as a method in older types of versions? So let's use ts for each child and said, I don't, I don't see any issue with, um, oh wait, is it source file dot for each child? Uh, I think this is fine. I don't see a need to refactor this. Just gonna move my variables around a little bit. Okay. And yeah, that's not related to this. Okay, dokey. This is all looking good. Alright, check out BTS version support. Uh Status get command uh chore docs mm. feet clarify ts support. It's tricky because it's not just a docs thing, it's also um it's also like a code change since I removed support. And technically, technically no one should have been relying on TypeScript 2.0 uh specific or things that break in TypeScript 2.0, but whatever, you know. Uh just to be proper. So, yep, yep, yep. Oh, right, I was gonna... Now on to last bit of work, clarifying the TS support. Uh, got a post. That's number 68. Uh, aligns to the definitely typed support range and removes a, a workaround for TS 2.0. Cool beans. I think it's fine as is. 119. All right, so yeah, I'm uh, basically done for the day. It's been a fun two plus hours. Thanks y'all for hanging out. Any last questions or comments, let me know now. Also, I gotta find someone to raid, so I'll do that in a little moment. 
um, after this stream. I always upload these to YouTube. I'm also going to uh, work on the tokens because um, the automatic publishing flow is broken, as is contributing flow. Like the all contributors auto recognition. So that'll be like a nice little follow up for me. But this was fun. One last thing. Come on. Get up actions. Oh, forgot to mark is ready for review. Auto merge. Wait, three pull requests. Oh, update dependency ES lens. Uh, <laughs> look at all these rebases. Oh, you poor little baby with your uh, your block file conflicts. Oh. All right. Yep. Yep. Let's merge. Yay. Yeah. Definitely not dealing with tokens left. But yeah. Thanks y'all for hanging out. This was fun. And I'm seeing on the stream manager thingy raid channel. Oh, Chris, Chris is live. Oh, I'll hang out and watch Chris. I want to do those follow-ups soon. So, last bit. Thanks, y'all. To recap, I'm Josh Goldberg. I'm a full-time open source maintainer of the TypeScript ecosystem working on projects such as TypeScript PS Lint that help you write TypeScript better. TypeScript PS Lint in particular focuses on allowing standard JavaScript tools such as ES on the Prettier to work on TypeScript code, as well as providing a comprehensive set of linting rules that allow you to write TypeScript code with more confidence. Yay! I've been practicing. Bye, y'all. This has been fun.